very good evening to all. So glad to have all of you here on a Saturday evening. Welcome to today's webinar and insight into interior designing. Thank you all for joining us today. Mission Skills is an initiative by the prestigious BK Birla Autonomous College and NIST Academy for encouraging the aspiring young minds to develop and enhance the next gen skills. This initiative is for the youth from colleges across the country. We are grateful to respected director, Dr. Naresh Chandra sir, principal director, uh, principal Dr. Avinash Patil sir, and Dr. Harish Dubey sir for providing us this opportunity to conduct these sessions. I would like to welcome Dr. Harish Dubey sir to share a few words. Thank you, Sneha ma'am. So I welcome all of you on the platform of Mission Skill on this Saturday evening. And uh, I'm very happy to see Mr. Jatin Asharji, Mr. Prakash Mehta ji here to share their knowledge and their experience in the field of interior designing. So I extend a warm welcome to both of you, sir, for accepting our invitation and uh, giving your precious time in the benefit of the students all over the country. I think uh, interior designing is a upcoming and very fascinating field because of the various developments taking place in the various cities across the world, particularly in India. There are so many avenues open nowadays for the students to make career in, in the field of interior designing as well. So I hope and I'm sure that uh, the, the insight what you are going to give will definitely benefit and it will uh, open a new avenue because students may not be aware that this interior designing is also a very fascinating field where the students can make a career in the field of interior designing as well. So once again, on behalf of BK Birla College, director, principal, all our staff members and students, I welcome both of you, sir, for accepting our invitation. And uh, we will, uh, we would like to listen to you as much as possible. And uh, at the end, we shall meet once again. Thank you very, very much and welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so all the participants, uh, before we move into the session, uh, I would just like to mention here that if you have any questions, uh, any questions during the session, please put them in the Q&A box that will be at the bottom of your screens. And we will be taking those questions at the end during the Q&A round. Uh, so moving on to the session, interior designing, like Harish sir mentioned that, you know, it's uh, definitely a very good career avenue for today. Because uh, like currently, if you see with an evolving lifestyle and you know, there is a lot of fast paced urbanization, the scope of interior designing has grown significantly. And definitely it is now looked at most sort of the profession. The uh, Indian homes are getting smaller and people are you know, finding out ways and means to make the home look really wonderful within that you know, confined spaces. So definitely interior designing is uh, one of the solutions to it. But how can we make a career uh, in interior designing and what all encompasses in this uh, interesting career? Let us look at uh, you know, th these aspects and we would definitely like to welcome uh, architect Jatin Asha sir and architect uh, Paras Mehta sir to give us some light on uh, these topics today. Uh, Jatin Asha sir is a postgraduate diploma holder in construction management and lead accredited professional in green certification. He has a teaching experience of about 10 years with various institutes in Mumbai. Architect Paras Mehta, with 18 years of experience of practicing architecture and interiors in various parts of India, and he has also been teaching at various institutes across Mumbai. The presentation will be led by architect Jatan Asha sir, and uh, architect Paras Mehta sir will be present to resolve any queries that you may have. Uh, architect Jatin Asha and architect Paras Mehta are directors of Square 3 Designs Private Limited, having an architectural as well as interior design practice, Pan Asia and South Africa. The company is specialized in designing education institutes. They have worked and are working on more than 25 institutes Pan Asia. They are course directors, program directors for this interior design course with NAFDI, School of Interior Designing. This day will be leading it from the first-hand experience for our students. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Jatin sir to 
take up the session so the session is over to you we sincerely like to thank dr dubey and sneha ma'am for such generous and brief introduction of ourselves and our company uh, as they have started that yes this field has lot of opportunities and it's an upcoming field i won't say it's an upcoming field it this field is going to become mandate in few days across the country so there is lot to talk about we want to take you inside the interior world interior designing world and it has lot to talk about and we think with only one hour with us so i would like jatin to start with that and i will be back hand supporting him when solving all your queries and giving answers so jatin moving over to you okay i'll uh, share my screen okay uh good evening everyone uh thank you sneha for the introduction given and paras thank you for it so uh let me drive through uh an insight into interior design and uh i would actually cover up topics which are related to it and would like to tell you more about it so these are the contents for today's uh, presentation and uh, we'll be going through each and every one by one so who are the interior designers what are the myths about interior designer which are the social responsibility for the interior designers broad design typologies um uh, which are mentioned here then what is green interiors biophilic interiors and what are the opportunities for the interior designers as a career and then later on uh, we'll take the question answer session as what sneha ma'am and paras mentioned we'll be answering all your queries Okay. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, who are the interior designers. So, interior designers are basically a professional who is having a blend of science, technology, fashion, and aesthetics. Now, science. Why science? and why technology why fashion and why aesthetics so science basically is required uh, for them to have understanding of light ventilation uh, vastu sense of direction technology will have them make understanding of the structure the electrical the air conditioning which is all we call hvac then fashion to understand what is current trends what are the type of material available what are the color selections how we make a composition and eventually the aesthetics aesthetics will all depend on what is the size and proportion of a person ergonomic well i am sitting on a chair it should be comfortable as well not only it should look nice it should be comfortable so interior designer will actually uh, after learning will form all this together or put this together to serve a project okay so basically interior designers are professionals who has understanding of these spaces and can deliver this task uh, to the perfection and to the requirement of the client interior designers is also about how you want to make people feel inside a space you know how 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 you want them to experience this workplace it may be home it may be workplace it may be public spaces or any other spaces it will all depend on the designer of how that space Uh, a person should experience you know uh, considering the aspects of designs the aesthetics the comfort uh, the colors the functionality the safety aspect the health issues and all so these are uh, basically qualities will make an interior designer i'll move further to what could be the social responsibility for an interior designer uh, i would say that design is to be socially relevant to the time where we live you know we we talk about lot of 
design you know we we talk about gothic kind of design we talk about type of design so we are in the 21st century we talk about being modern being minimalistic so we in current scenario we talk about that design uh, why modern why minimalistic at what sneha ma'am was mentioning that the houses are getting smaller the work spaces are getting cramped so how we should make out the most uh, within those confined spaces is, is the is the best way to look at it okay uh, that also will have material selection so we should select materials uh, not only as per the form function and aesthetic but also it should be environmentally suitable or environmental friendly so uh, of course I'll, i'll cover much of this in uh, later half of this presentation um then we should encourage the design which is more uh, energy conscious uh, which is making maximum use of natural light and ventilation uh design which also we are using lot of natural materials or less processed materials uh which we procure from nearby regions to save on carbon footprints uh design which is suitable to climate where you are dealing with like for example you are in mumbai okay so you mumbai is basically hot and humid uh arguably yes we should use a limited amount of glass facades because there is a lot of heat gain and then you have to air condition that space so these are some of the logic we need to apply when we are actually design the space where you are belonging to or where that region particular region is okay uh then their social responsibility will be to create spaces which depict a design style to that era so as i mentioned that uh, modern architecture or minimalistic architecture is today's trend because we have small amount of space and for that even small amount of space there is a lot of cleaning which is required right with uh, the kind of shortage of staff uh, and people uh, we need to make something which is minimal functional and beautiful okay the most important point which any designer not only interior designer or any designer architect should all follow is design should be spastic friendly uh, this is actually a very vast topic but spastic friendly is basically for design for assisted people you know people with disabilities uh, so for example you must have traveled in a metro on a metro station you must have seen a strip uh just before the 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 coach you know that is a little crooked or let us little rough that is basically guiding a blind person to the to the coach and where the door entrance is that try the tile texture will be completely different so that's how a blind person will know where to go okay the railing height the elevator the ramp this will guide a disabled person or person with specific need uh more than what normal people or you and me could do uh so we need to keep all these designs in mind we need to uh create the space which will be useful to them as it is useful to us uh again one part of social responsibility is to you know of course we kind of keep looking at the previous designs what what people have done uh what are the current trends but we should try and depict a style or make a style which will actually uh, make a trend tomorrow right uh moving on there are certain myths about the interior designers now so people are little confused of what a interior designer is or what are what is interior decoration so interior decoration and interior design is not the same interior decoration can be done uh yeah by a person who has a basic sense of aesthetics you know just putting some good color combinations together uh bit putting few art artifacts here and together make a nice composition which is look wise it is good okay however an interior designer will make sure that it should look good yes for sure but it should also function well you know that is the main the main uh, criteria of a interior designer as i had explained to you previously that there will be application of science there will be application of technology there will be application of fashion and there will be sense of aesthetics right so interior designer can be a decorator but a decorator cannot be an interior designer the second myth uh, so qualification is really necessary or interior designer can be any cup of tea so 
as i give the, the reference uh, just before this that interior designer need a specific skill set hmm? apart from uh, these technology fashion fashion and aesthetics they also need to have a sense of local bylaws building codes safety parameter health parameter they all need to know and they have to have a gist of project management how project should run where the material will be available what kind of material should be used where you know and the time schedule because time is money so if the client is hiring a space they will need certain things in specific time so qualification of a interior designer uh, is a must that's true okay the third myth uh, is is only about knowing the trend so the trend is basically it comes and go, goes you know it's not knowing about it. it's about what the client wants at the end of the day so that is very important as far as uh, the current trends and all are concerned and we want to actually make their own trend as i told you that we want to make an effective design with correct scale and proportion with correct aesthetics but that should actually be followed by other people that is what we should try and achieve so the next slide uh, next slide says myth number 4 whether interior designers are affordable i am sure they are so uh, giving you an example of hiring an a designer or hiring someone uh, for example making a cupboard and uh, you are spending something just because it is cheap but then end of the day it is not functioning as what you want or how you want uh, your entire money is going to get wasted so might as well hire a professional who has knowledge of the subject who knows exactly what details should be used what is a maintenance free finish what kind of hardware should be used uh, to actually make it more user friendly make it more look richer within your budget right so definitely interior design designers should be desirable should be appointed and are affordable so that is a myth and uh, people should do away with it so uh, in 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 that case i would like to say that uh, it takes much more to be an interior designer than just choosing pretty colors and just making storages you know so there is a lot of effort which has been put interior designers will know the correct resource for you to get stuff in a correct manner right uh interior designers the fifth myth is interior designers are only hired for doing homes well this myth is very very uh, outdated and old interior designer is what harish sir mentioned today it's a vast and very big industry interior designers uh, are been hired by every people and i'll explain this in detail when i'm taking my presentation further Uh, and i'll talk more about it so after i this i'll start with the design typology so we have put some bay broad design typologies uh, for us to understand of course there can be lot many sub typologies in this uh, but we have broadly mentioned few typologies which we can explain and all of these we are going to uh, show it to you today uh like an example of the by project spot we have done and since everybody feel that residential is the only thing uh the interior designer can do let's start with the residential sector first and uh let's see how and what all are possibilities in the residential current segment so this picture is uh the living room of one of the projects we have done uh you've seen that you know you need to derive uh, a residential project or you need to decide on a residential project which is different the client will have their own aspirations in terms of requirement in terms of i want this i want that i want my house to look like this they will give you certain functional requirement what a interior designer needs to do or what we have done in this particular project is taken that functional requirement put it together uh tried it different combinations and make things with a good composition that is what we need to do which is again functionally working well uh including the technology 
including the aesthetics including the comfort so in this particular living room what we have done is we have created a lot of warmth uh, you can see we have used italian marble in the flooring we have do, done veneer and gypsum ceiling which is bringing in the warmth we have done some sand art we have by virtue of which we have introduced a gujarat uh, tribal art in it which is bringing in a lot of value uh, we have used metal screens we have used wood we have used a lot of colors in it in terms of paint in terms of fabric uh, we have used some artifacts to kind of enhance the overall effect the paintings similarly again this is a separate view you can see a lot of patterns which we have created in the wood uh, different materials uh, fabrics for the chairs a combination of it uh, the blue color actually is on the wall is breaking away from the monotony of the entire space otherwise uh, in this particular fashion what we have done is we have added <coughs> excuse me we have added some persian rugs which is giving a break to the overall flooring uh, and in terms of colors we have thrown some cushions uh, this is the master bedroom of uh, the house and uh, again the client aspire to have a different kind of looks uh, you will find these type of challenging throughout the projects which we will be doing and uh, in the best particular way you will try and achieve this so here we have what we have done is we have used a wooden headboard which is laid in pattern we have created certain form and uh, design out of the wooden patterns we have used of wallpaper wooden flooring uh, the bed and the wardrobes is a combination of the pu so to make it a look a little lighter because the backdrop is very heavy uh, the light beige color chairs we are gelling with the flooring this is the master toilet uh, which is done in uh, single color italian marble uh, if you as you see uh, we have done glass partition between the shower area and the wc area so these are basic sense and we have a, like you know basically divided the spaces into dry semi dry and the wet so whenever you go to the bathroom you your feet are not wet and you don't bring that wet feet outside this basically to maintain hygiene uh, this is an ideal scenario though you will still see a lot of constraints in other toilets as well these are some of the pictures you can see the mirror we have done some artifacts there we have done provisions to put their laundry put their uh, towels and other stuff uh, plus the toiletries this is the second bedroom uh, which we have designed and this the client had asked for a english or a english looking uh, bedroom so it's like a british feel to it with a light in color we have used a lot of molding and uh, wall paneling on it uh, you can also see some hanging lights out of it and we have tried to use the fabric which is uh, kind of complementing or uh, i would say that uh, all the fabrics are of a similar tone Uh, right from the curtains the shears the loungers and the bed itself plus what we have done is apart from the wood we have added some uh, metal work in this you can see the tight side table and the book rack besides the tv unit which is done in metal and glass combination plus there are combinations in uh, grays and white which giving you a truly english look there are some more pictures of uh, the same this is the third bedroom uh, here we have done a little bit of modernist type of uh, interiors where we have done complete veneer paneling in two combination of the veneers uh, which is we have tried to create a pattern out of which you can see a gray ceiling here uh, the wood which is a little darker and the regular wood uh, this is the fourth bedroom this is a guest bedroom which is also used as a tv room and the sofa is actually designed to be as a sofa combed so whenever the guests are using this room it can be converted to a sofa combed and in the general time they are using this as a tv room again this being the smallest room amongst the all we have tried to use a lighter color on the wardrobes to make it a larger look
these are the images of the passage and on the right side you can see there is a, a powder toilet which is again a small and we have done a single marble which we have used throughout this is a complete modular kitchen and uh, what we have done is we have used everything concealed if you can see on the right side there is a oven there is a microwave and concealed hob you can see the washing machine also which is concealed in front complete modular solution being a small kitchen uh, we have made it very functional and neat uh going on to the second design typology this is a commercial project uh, which we have designed in bangalore for an it company called zensa technologies i would like to also mention that this is a green project uh, with green interiors it's uh, rated by indian green building council which is known as igbc uh, and they have rated this as a platinum rating uh, which is the highest in the 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 <coughs> rating what they have so i'll take you through this further and uh, the green interiors i'll explain at the end of the presentation this is the reception of the commercial project the entrance is uh, the flooring is italian marble we have used a combination of it the bright and white ceiling with some pergolas make it a larger green look and uh, the glass paneling blue color is again the logo color of zensa technologies and what we have done is we have kept a separate waiting area which you can see on the left side this is just to control the traffic movement so that people which are who are waiting they don't really disturb the flowing traffic because there are almost 650 people working in this and they this door the entrance door is an access control door so everybody has to punch in there and then they need to move for security reasons so the waiting area is kept separately so in general time when people are entering the office they don't really hamper or uh, obstruct the entrances this is the executive conference room area uh, on the left side which you see is uh, some wall paneling we have done which is acu for acoustic reasons we have used carpet and the false ceiling for the thing and there is a task lighting which we have provided on the table so in case of video conferencing which you can see right up on the tv there is the camera so in case of the video conferencing the task lighting can actually lit up your face like how you can see me now there is a task light on me you can see my face really well so that lighting also plays a very important role when we are designing this is another view uh, on the hind side of the chair person you can see there is a branding which has been done so branding is another aspect and there is a specialist which are required to work with interior designers for branding because lot of uh, it is and retail people do a lot of branding in their own premise this is the executive area executive cabin i mean to say uh this is the view of the work hall uh, where actual work happens and on the right if you see there is a work hall which is open and on the left side if you see of the passage there are closed cab work halls so this is as per the requirement of the client you know they they need have enclosed work hall which are dedicated to a particular client they are serving to and what we have done here is to identify those location we have played with the colors and what we have done is the ceiling and the flooring of the passage has been uh, designed in a specific color and a fashion so that it depicts that it is a passage and then you bifurcate further from that and on the right side there is a blue color area which is an open work hall there is one more work work hall which i'll show you in the other image which is of a different color and the closed work hall which are of different color so by looking at the color itself you know where you are heading and you know where it is you see this is another example of open work hall where you see that even in the flooring we try to match the color of the uh, soft boards which you have used on the workstations partition and uh, this are the images of the closed work hall which we have used green uh, the gray carpet is the common throughout and there are green accent pieces like in this this is a training hall 
this has again a flexible training which has could be collaborative which can be uh, in a classroom fashion which you can see if you see there are wheels to this these are foldable tables which can be mounted moved in a different fashion as what it is will be required in the form of training you are giving this is the cafeteria uh, now cafeteria is a space wherein a lot of interaction happens uh, so we have made it very cheerful very colorful use of wood use of a uh, lot of color glass hanging lights we doing task lighting we have used some green in the ceiling and made uh, nice and cheerful with because the most of the it crowd is a very young crowd uh, which are fresh out of college and you know they are generally in age group of around 30 the average age group ki be 28 so keeping the young crowd in the mind we have used a lot of colors um, this area is their hub and server room is basically the heart of the any it office and this is what they proudly show or present like how we show of what work we have done uh, we use a glass partition here so they can show and when they show this to their client that how safe and secured uh, you can see each and every wire crimped properly tied properly so they know that exactly their data is been processed and been safe safely kept this is what has been their showcased to show their client you can see there is a fire extinguisher placed uh, next to it there is other fire suppression system also which has been used the air conditioning is separate you can see the grills which are separate then the regular work halls there is a backup system also which has been provided there are other views of the passage along with the cafeteria now uh, this particular topic is uh, one of my favorite uh, as uh, institutional and uh, this is like a very big upcoming process uh, sorry upcoming projects institutional just give me a break one second upcoming thank you so much so uh i would share a small thing here that uh, the kind of school i have been to and i'm i'm sure many of our seniors present here in uh, this webinar today must have been to the typical school where just you go to the classroom the teacher teaches you in your back uh very very like a typical prototype and you know the maximum craving is always to go to the ground and play uh which is now changing you know this is because the schools are now becoming very very collaborative are now becoming very very child friendly are now becoming unlike very typical school which we used to go to so it is very very interactive uh, and this has happened because of today's modern technology and we as designers have implemented this modern technology in the schools uh just to give you an example that all these schools which we have designed having the modern technology has enabled these schools to function with ease in this pandemic situation wherein everybody is home children are not going to school and each of this classroom is absolutely enabled with all the technology with wifi with tvs so that the e classroom or e classes can be conducted with ease you know so uh, institutes are adapting this technology in today scenario and it is lot different than the schools we used to know so this increases a lot of responsibility of the designer let it be an architect or a interior designer to make uh, this particular design which can house all this technology or uh, house all the collaborative spaces which is a which is today's need of an institution so this is the reception of the school and uh, we have doors flanging on either side of the reception because there will be a lot of student which will be coming in and out at a given point of time uh, we have tried to make kids as colorful as possible we have tried to use uh, some colorful fufis i am not very sure whether you can see this this actually says g i i s these are fufis actually made in names uh, we have tried to use some greens where they can display their trophies their accolades uh, 
what achievements the school has given we have shown a uh, couple of tvs uh, you can see this in a small video we have shot and uh, today's technology also gives uh, leave to the architects wherein they can use they can actually of course these are actual images but we can actually make this in few softwares and actually can be presented the way it is these are actual images these are not 3d images so this will enable us to work off site or from the office this uh, is a vc room uh, which is actually meant for teacher training and student training uh, by virtue of this or the design actually is meant for them to connect with the global uh, education experts so these schools are there globally in many countries so education experts can actually connect to students and teacher sharing their knowledge uh, you know of the current trend and again in the industry or any education field as well uh, as far as interior design is concerned we have designed this in a particular fashion if you see the center area uh, there is a seating and we have made this circular to have a vision uh so that the vision lines are clear when there is uh, video conferencing going on the central area you see is a step down where we have provided a sofa seating inside where few people can sit in a little casual manner and people who are presenting can be at the table uh, acoustics are most important uh, feature of this we have used carpet we have used some acoustical fabric paneling to make this function as it is so that's the responsibility of the designer and that's a short video of the how the space looks like this is the library space uh unlike the libraries what we used to have earlier wherein nobody used to really talk libraries are now uh been uh, you know people are encouraged to actually go conduct discussion at library get on on a common topic have discussion involve your teacher uh, and get some good output output out of it so library are now more of a collaborative spaces than a regular library where there is to maintain silence uh, library also gives you because since it's a common area there will be lot of students who will be gathering here you can see we have used uh, the vinyl flooring which gives you uh, you know better option for cleaning this it's anti static and uh, this is again done for because of uh, the health reason because of the cleanliness we need to maintain in the schools there are few more images of how uh, the library looks you can see a screen type of partition which is actually an open bookshelf and behind the open bookshelf there is a pre primary library which is kind of without the furniture where small kids will go pick up books they'll play they'll have some toys uh, so both the library functioning in the same space uh, and it's more useful for uh, for the school to have a multi use of space i'll show you how so this is the space we have given some low storage is low seating some kind of foofy arrangements uh, you can see the bookshelves and kids can pick up books there can be some soft toys the small touring story telling sessions can be conducted by the teachers here so it's a multi use space by end of the day it's just not a library uh, these spaces are very important uh, considering that uh, you know this, the real estate is very expensive this is a short video of the library space this is the mini auditorium where they are placing the loose furniture and uh, acoustics is very key to this uh, it's been designed as a proper auditorium so in case tomorrow they want to put a regular seat it is possible for them to do it this is a music room uh, i'll move a little faster uh, this is a dance room has resilient flooring which is typically used in any any dance studios 
which will give you bounce while you dance this is their it lab we have used a little form on the table uh, this is very interesting place this call as a art room in typical schools what we went there was no dedicated art room the furniture and uh, the entire room has been designed uh, specifically giving by giving the requirements of the the school you can see the stand which is popping up from the table and all so even this gives a vast opening for interior designer to have work as a product designer or a furniture designer this is called as a mont lab or we know as a rumpus room is basically an activity room for younger kids pre primary kids uh, where you see this is a small amphitheater where a storytelling session can be conducted where kids cross motor and fry fine motor skills can be developed so you can see a climbing wall you can see some ball pool you can see a small amphitheater you can see some collaborative seating uh, where a small session can be conducted by the teachers there is a artwork which is done on the wall which is some cartoon characters and all it gives a lot of character to this space this is their office area again very nice and open treated acoustically some visitor seating which is allowed there uh this is the view from the outside where we had designed the play field also wherein there will be challenges to the interior designer to design uh if you see on the right side there is a small children play area so a lot of the pre primary schools which we do we do we design the play area inside the school uh again coming to the fourth typology which is industrial now industrial design also requires a lot of interior design inputs uh, as current market scenario this is again a vast field uh we have designed this as an uh, engineering excellence center for a company which is hitachi they are into air conditioning i'm sure uh, most of us know them and what they have done with uh, with this engineering excellence center they have uh, put they have made labs where they put all their equipments so i'll show you how it is uh, you can see this is the reception which is nice and welcoming we have created couple of training rooms where you can see if it is divided with sliding folding partition which is here which is again acoustical so simultaneously two sessions can be conducted uh, for trainers so what essentially they will do they will train uh, the person who will be doing execution or people who are going to do uh, actually work or actual installation will be done you know uh, by these people they will train them so they have all these product displayed in their labs and there is a workshop in this lab wherein they will show how the piping is joined what type of refrigerant piping it is used how how they will be creating environment these are small pcbs and all inside and this is requirement i mean to to understand all this because at the back of back end we need to provide all this because where the air conditioning will go how the piping will be root how we need to hide so that is what an interior design needs to understand okay so this is all stage by stage uh, which has to be done you can see there are more pictures of course this is an automation panel there is a touch pad screen of temperature control and of course there is a lot of branding which everybody does as, as i was telling you in the institute also there is a lot of branding which has to happen uh, the cafeteria is another space where a lot of branding happens this is the back office so if you look at the pillar also so we not left any pillar also they have done branding in the same the conference room uh, which are used for a small training also uh again this typology of retail uh, there is always a requirement you know in today's situation the malls and all are not open but this is not this this industry is here to stay everybody needs a lot of retail which has happened so today i am going to share a couple of example of retail uh, this particular uh, is a uh, the this particular picture which i have shown is a lounge uh of a very high end uh, jewelry uh sorry it's a very where high end jewelry is made or designed you know and you can really go there only by appointments and we have kind of made this like very comfortable so whenever you go and you do jewelry you you select jewelry 
you need comfort of a different level when you're selecting any high end jewelries like this so what we have done here is to we have created an ambience we have created a lounge feeling where a client can go they can be comforted uh, we have coffee machines we have wine cellars wine cooling machines here and it has to depict a different kind of richness so we have used a lot of leather cladding wooden flooring we have used some persian rugs we have used like italian leather uh, the sofas and there are a lot of artifacts there is music system uh, there is automation in lighting because uh, while you are looking at the jewelry different kind of lighting is required while in normal time when you are discussing the different color of light is required so you can see uh, how the overall thing is done in a monochromatic fashion even the italian marble is kind of matching the wood and the leather which we have used uh, if you see this seems to be like a mirror panel but there is actually a tv inside which actually when the tv is shut uh, you can see it is like a mirror so you really don't come to know there is a tv behind it uh, again you know so when 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 the tv is off it will give you uh, image of a like a regular lounge space this is the dealing room so once you finalize the design you can go and talk to them about the details of you know how many diamonds what kind of gold thread this and that and what's going to cost and they can even share details of what they are using right so this dealing room also is taken up in a similar color fashion uh it's very monochromatic we try to restrict our color self you can see the italian top on the table uh which is blending to the colors which you have used outside for many views of this uh this is again a small casio showroom which is done in one of the malls again each of these brands have a fixed set of designs color combinations which is set you know as a interior designer it is your role to tell the combination of what it is you know how it will look and depending on what kind of product they are going to sell which should be the first which 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 unit should be kept this kept second and lighting plays a very important role in this you know uh, for example just to give you like to, what what you can see me right now i probably was been some 350 lakhs it's a little technical and in your mall if you go it will be probably 750 or 1000 lakhs so it will be like twice as bright as what it is right now you know so because that's how the product you know will be displayed properly that's how the product will sell so these are basic fundamentals for a for which is not possible to understand by a decorator you need technical competence by a interior designer which you know by studying them and uh it can be actually brought into perspective you need to follow certain guidelines for it uh unless you provide with the desired lux level your product will not sell for sure uh coming to hospitality uh so restaurants cafes hotels and all are trends which are never going to die you know and most of the cafes or uh, wherever you go generally it depend on what cuisine you are having so if you go to a chinese restaurant you you feel that you have come to china you know the the design elements are of those type so the current example which i am showing you is a irish cafe with a fine dining which we had designed at juhu uh so what we did or what is a interior designer's responsibility is to study what an irish cafe looks like we we have to see how they function uh how the what type of material it is and then we need to make it design and which should be suitable to the requirement of the client okay so if you see here this is a very typical example of a irish bar come cafe where you can even have a beer and a coffee together okay uh on the upper floor we have used a fine dining the green colors typical typical irish uh hospitality we have used a lot of wood we have used stained glass if you see the light fitting are of stained glass uh, we had got this specifically made for the fine dining uh, you see a generous use of use of wood you can also see use of the stained glass in the center of the ceiling which is backlit uh the left side photos which is there it's a metal panel which was laser cut and uh, coated with copper oxidized copper material 
this is the second hospitality project. Uh, it's a Chinese restaurant in Mumbai, and uh, this will show you the artifacts, the the statues which you have used, the grills, the flooring material, and everything. <coughs> so by looking at it only you will come to know that yes these guys must be offering a chinese cuisine so that is how people should uh, get elements into the design okay and uh, the lighting the task lighting the bar unit the backlit of the bar unit even the small hanging lights which is depicting chinese characteristics are there so this is a matter of detailing which a interior designer should research should study about get references the last one is healthcare so this specific example we have recently finished this uh, skin care uh, space so unlike a typical clinic this is not a typical clinic because this has a a small ot that's operation theater and there is a small procedure room uh, wherein uh, they are treating your hair they are treating your skin uh, is more to do with cosmetics and laser surgeries uh this is how their reception look like the left side is the picture which we had thought and the right side is actually which is built uh one more shot of the reception from the other side so this is their cabins where the consulting happens they will see through of what you have what is the issue what what you what needs to be done and uh, there is a small bed behind which is having some procedure area i'm not showing you the ot and uh, the other picture because of some uh, equipment issues this is a small pharmacy which they have created for their uh, medical or the products which they want to give it to the customers talking about green interiors uh, i am taking for the the project the commercial project which i had shared with you earlier zensa technology you can see the trophy you can see the email from uh, the igbc saying the igbc platinum rating which is the maximum rating uh, provided by igbc and you can see the award sheet as well uh so this is a concept sketch which we had designed uh, wherein we we keep in mind that the maximum light should come in so the work hall should be designed on the periphery where people are going to use the maximum daylight which is coming in uh, cafeteria should have a dedicated exhaust and all this including your sensors the daylight sensor the occupancy sensors will be connected through a building management system and that's how we make this whole thing effective uh we have undertaken eco design approach water conservation energy efficiency use of indoor material and indoor environment so in the eco design what we have done is uh, 88% of regularly occupied area uh, will actually get the vision you see if i have done so you can see that entire periphery is open to work halls so maximum 88% of people who are occupying the space will have vision to outside that means they'll see the daylight uh, 26% of those people uh, will have daylight coming in for them uh 63% of the carpet area is free of circulation so it is focused uh in the areas and 40% of portable water use is reduced by using the low flow fixtures which is a must so because today is there is a lot of issues and scarcity of water people are uh, reusing this water also uh, but there are specific products which are low flow fixtures which we are using Uh, by which we can save a lot of water supply uh, we are saving a uh, lot of power by using daylight we are using leds uh, we are using daylight sensors so that if there is there is enough light the automatically enough light which is coming from outside automatically the sensor will sense that and the uh, lights in that particular area will get switched off uh, we have used vav system in the air conditioning of course that's a very detailed area uh, which unfortunately cannot be completed in this particular webinar but that's uh, one of the one of the ways to save energy in air conditioning because air conditioning consumes around 60% of your total electricity bills uh 
the interior material we i have uh, kept in mind 3r 3r is reduce recycle and reuse so we have used 88% of the waste which was generated has been sold to the scrap vendor which can be recycle and reuse that is what we have done uh, interior materials uh, are sourced locally that is what we have done to again to cut down the carbon footprint um, 37% of the material we have used has lot of recyclable content uh, and which has low embodied energy as well you can see it on mdf plywood and all that you can see this is the scorecard i'll skip the biophilic interiors this is bringing in a lot of green into the interiors uh i would like to talk about the opportunities uh, for interior designer as a career and you can see there are a lot of it uh, as careers so i would say 95% of architects in india pro practices interiors so an interior designer can actually work with an architect do designs do coordination do 3d visualization surveying estimation green interiors modulator uh, they can also work with a as project execution so they can probably work as a contractor with the contractor they can do site supervision uh, or they can work with a construction company do site supervision quality uh, supervision or quality surveyor tendering billing mep coordinator mep coordinator is, uh, coordinator is essentially who will know a little of technical stuff of electrical air conditioning plumbing they can also need procurement because procurement guys should have the know how of the industry what is technically available what is cheaper what could be probably we'll get it cheaper we'll get it in time so there is a big 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 uh, requirement for procurement industry as well there can be a lot of requirement in modular furniture if you see this commercial project they were modular furnitures which is there you can work probably as a product designer you can do site survey because for making a modular uh design or implementing it assigned a lot of site surveys which is required you can be part of research and development so that if a simple thing is a chair if you are sitting on a chair whether it is comfortable or not you can actually actually work on the ergonomics do research and development of whether it is supporting your lower back and or that then you can get into production and implementation of those design uh you can get into kitchens again kitchen is a specific uh segment where a product designers are required site surveying of those research and development again product and implementation set designing again is a vast vast uh, topic uh, wherein lot of interior designer work on set designs because there has been tv serials there have been movies where its set designs are required the color combinations are required that in specific set designing team uh, project management consultant again is a very big uh, they have a very big appetite to absorb interior designers at as supervising tendering billing mbb coordinators again you can get into knowledge sharing get into teaching uh and there are many more there are many more you know uh, ways where interior designers can be working with you know you can do client representation you can be in maintenance department you can work with a developer there be a vastu consultant furniture and retail sales so if, for example an ikea store ikea store hires interior designer as their sales person because they will also need to have a technical knowledge of what they are selling so right from these people to fabric designers uh their upholsteries and uh, what kind of combination will go what type of fabric like will have so there are much more opportunities uh, as far as interior designer as a career if you look at uh so looking forward actually uh, to uh, get all these together uh, and uh, i would rather say that uh, uh, this current scenario is actually open for all kind of businesses and it has great amount of potential uh, with this kind of clientele which is there in the market uh there's a lot of potential for interior designers to work and make a career for themselves thank you so much uh i think i'm through with my presentation
thank you so much sir uh, those were some indeed some definitely uh, some really good insights and uh, those visuals have really helped everybody to see that uh, like you mentioned in the beginning that interior designing is not restricted only to residential uh, spaces uh, it has you know catered to different kinds of spaces commercials uh, you know education institutions and hospitality what not i mean definitely interior designing is required in each and every uh, industry and uh, rightly mentioned that you know utilizing that space whether that's a commercial space or a residential space uh, that is something that the interior designing will be you know that will prepare the interior designer to get a right uh, you know hold on those uh, areas uh so sir uh, uh, we'll just uh, move into a few questions and uh, you know that we have received from the participants okay. now we have uh, a few uh, students who would want to get into this uh, career for interior designing uh, so uh, any preparations that they need to do or any skill sets that that they need to upgrade themselves with yeah as uh, i was telling you that there is of course it's uh, you need to know science you need to know technology uh so a bit of science and mathematics is more important actually uh english of course for uh basic because english is more acceptable in terms of language while communication so basic communication skills in english is a must and uh, mathematics and bit of physics would actually help them to uh be more prepared uh to cater to any such uh, interior designer or an architecture uh, background uh these are the two or three subjects which we need they need to actually focus on to get into these type of practices apart from of course apart from looking into visuals like these getting hands on their sketches and so right, right, right. everybody need not be a good sketcher so i just need to tell that also technically if you understand a lot of stuff Uh, you don't need to be a painter to become an interior designer i would like to say this to all but yes understanding of the technical knowledge will be uh, a plus great great so yes they will now uh, don't take the maths and the science very lightly so maths and science will not only land up into careers for you know maths into accountancy and science into doctors but that is required for interior designing also absolutely uh, so like you mentioned that uh, you know not everybody needs to be a painter and extremely creative but uh, is you know any portfolio preparation required for uh, getting into these kind of uh, programs no not really uh, uh, but there are small bridge courses which are available so to kind of just get into this you know there are small bridge courses which will uh give you insight of what the technical drawings are if somebody is not done technical drawings some technical drawings a bit of perspective of what uh, the design would be a bit of mathematics related to the subject of interior design and uh, uh, english as i told you for communication skills so a lot of these small bridge courses are available uh, and uh, i'm sure they can do that and uh, get admissions to these courses right 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 absolutely and uh, so there is uh, you know disha jain uh, who's asking that you know if somebody wants to switch from commerce into interior designing so what would be the right path like you know for students who have just completed their 12th will it be uh, you know how can they get into that yeah absolutely so most of these courses uh, do start after hsc that is the 12th uh, so and um, most of the interior designers designing schools and all they generally get to do a small bridge course or they have to apply for these exams and 12th in fact is the right time because you know you you are actually getting into the field at the correct time you know after even so it's like getting into engineering because it's just because it is an interior design doesn't mean it is inferior you know as i as i said it is a vast field and lot of know how is required and they have a lot of social responsibility so right. it is the right time to switch after 12 no matter if it is even commerce not an issue at all as far as you know basics of maths and english tell be good enough actually for person to switch so 12th is the right time i would right. say and right. for that even somebody has finished graduation and then still they want to pursue they can definitely do it okay 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 great and uh, also some of the viewers are also wanting to ask like you know probably for architectures you have these entrance exams yes. uh, but do they need to appear and get qualified for these entrance exams for interior designing 
yes ma'am so most of the institutes uh, will have this entrance exam so we generally they pick up students who who know a bit you know they they have to have that knack of or they i would not say knack i would say they should have inclination towards that subject you know otherwise it is a difficult it is a difficult uh, uh, difficult career to get through because unless you like it you you have to really like it to go right. further i would say that way right. you know right. so so generally by appearing for these exam more which most of the institute do uh, if they pass that then you know that they have a liking for the subject yes 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 absolutely and the, even their uh, knowledge level is also gauged like you mentioned absolutely. the basics of math and absolutely absolutely ma'am Okay. So definitely, uh, you know, preparing for uh, these kind of exams will also help. And now that uh, you know the colleges and everything are just you know sessions are happening online, so all the students will be having plenty of time at home to prepare for these kind of examinations. Yes, yes. Uh, there are also uh, you know few questions on what are the kind of tools uh, one. can start preparing themselves like they like these wonderful designs so that you showed so yes. like autocad is something that is popularly known that you know designers would be using so any such tools that you know people can try their hands on so autocad basically is not a designing it's, it's just basically a drafting tool it's is whatever it's your thought process you just kind of put on uh, to it as far as interior design to because a startup is concerned you know when they are starting it can do much more of course later uh, however they should actually uh, try to do more of sketching more of still lifes uh, sketching they can get hand on to the elementary and intermediate drawing examination book if they have not done so in their schooling time that will give them a lot of idea of what uh, drawing is all about what type of shades we should use what type of pencil thicknesses you should use each and every line has a meaning you know why this line is lighter or why this line is darker has a meaning you know yeah. so they can probably for to start with basics they can do do thing and people who are using tabs and ipads and all they can probably get into uh, some sketching app uh, maybe autodesk or anything else uh, ipads they have their notes they can try sketching on uh, but essentially uh, i think hand sketching will be more useful than anything else uh, because that is the basis of anything when you go to site uh, these autocad and all will not be available yeah, right 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 so uh, we we can have paras sir also joining the q and a session sir yes ma'am yes sir uh, sir also uh, there are a few questions coming in that uh, you know currently now uh, you know there is more focus on having environmental friendly designs so uh, your thoughts on that like how can the young students imbibe these things and incorporate this uh, in this in some time this is going to become mandate it has become mandate for some commercial premises it is going to become mandate for everyone because the way we are losing our natural resources it has to become mandate so an interior designer well qualified interior designer will be able to give you much more better solution so joining a course having all this facility will really help them a lot right 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 and um, sir uh, after this covid pandemic that you know everybody is uh, into and we are definitely uh, looking at a positive approach but is this going to you know change any design uh, you know uh, perspective or you know some guidelines or design aspects while creating certain spaces it will definitely change the aspects it will change the dimensions also because social distancing will become a very very big component of design nowadays so i believe that there will be new norms given by government for designing some specific spaces so if you are part of the field you will get to know it and you will have to adopt those things in your designs to make it implemented in field great 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 uh and uh, there are a few uh, queries from students that uh, you know what are the courses that they can join after uh, 12 so a uh, bachelor's in interior designing or you know any such courses sir bachelor's in interior design is a very big scope okay if they don't have much of an access to the timeline they can do pg diploma also but bachelor is much more recommended 
okay 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 and for the ones probably who have uh, been pursuing graduation who are currently in their graduating years or who have completed graduation uh, any courses for them they can do pg diploma there are part time courses or over the weekends you know they will serve them the same purpose and they will be able to achieve the degree right 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 great great uh and uh, sir before we wrap up any concluding thoughts on uh, uh for our students today who would want to pursue a career in interior design it is a very big field it has a lot of opportunities and with the current situation and technology it is going to open wider doors for them so joining at this point in time and uh, having you know being in field after 4 5 years is going to be big so it's right time to join the course great 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 uh, jatin sir uh, concluding thoughts from your end sir yeah pretty similar at what paras told so the opportunities are there to back for you know you i mean okay just just leave apart the today scenario you cannot you know you cannot do without school you cannot do without restaurant you cannot do without cafes you cannot do without any public spaces so as what paras told that there will be some norms which will be which government will imply but then interior designer will have to put their thought process also you know in terms of what material also to use whether this material going to be hygienic how good it is to be at cleaning it and all that kind of stuff so okay. uh, i personally feel that uh, we should take this proactively and this is time to study all the pros and cons of uh, pros and cons of the design we are doing and what could have been a possible possibility in the, in the current scenario so that is what we should all do and uh, take this further great great thank you so much uh, jatin sir and paras sir uh, for taking the time out today and sharing your uh, experiences and insights and these valuable uh, you know designs that you've shared with us and all the viewers today uh, we would uh, like to thank you for uh, you know sharing all uh, your knowledge with our viewers today i would also like to thank uh, bk billa autonomous college uh, and a special thanks uh, to the uh, director uh, sir uh, dr naresh chandra sir and principal dr vinash patel sir and uh, dr harish dubey sir i would like to welcome uh, harish dubey sir to share his concluding thoughts on today's session yeah thank you sneha ma'am but uh, i can see dr naresh chandra sir here on screen sir uh, would you like to comment something sir uh, is an excellent session is very fascinating thank you sir i, you, sir. I would like to appreciate both the esteemed speakers is a wonderful interaction and also miss asher for connecting beautifully so all our best wishes it is all possible because of our management particularly the chairman shri ur chitlangi ji and we really very happy that the students have got such a opportunity shri balkrishna sharma and all his colleagues deserve a special thanks for joining hands with us in organizing such a mission skill program a series is a great and all my best wishes thank you sir thank you sir thank, thank you at all thank you very much sir and after sir has already given uh, thanks from his side i am no one to thank uh, further because uh, sir is our mentor our everything and no but you uh, give formal vote of thanks to dr <laughs> yes sir yes sir yes sir but uh, i would like to thank uh, mr uh, jatin and mr pa Paras ji for uh, sparing their valuable time and making our day. In fact, you have shown us the beauty and the world of interior design. We could uh, just see some uh, good uh, interiors, but you have shown us everything. And looking at the various kind of interiors, I can see that there, this avenue is open in almost all the fields. Yes. Uh, the the uh, scope is in hospitals, scope is in schools, it is in colleges, it is in uh, corporates, it is in offices. i think uh, this area is open everywhere 
and if uh, there is more uh, area open obviously there will be more employability also available only thing is that students have to think over it uh, i think this is a very good um, platform which can be made available through the field of interior design also and you, you both of being i uh, i know that you have been teaching into interior, interior design colleges also and i think uh, you have made it made up very clear that this is a very uh, fascinating and upcoming field which is also open for the students and uh, on behalf of uh, our director sir although he has already blessed us our management our uh, principal staff students everyone i extend my sincere gratitude to both of you sir for uh, making our day and in fact uh, the thing which you have uh, shown us it was really beyond our imagination so once again thanks to both of you and also thanks are due to mr uh, balkishan sharma ji mr vipul solanki ms neha sir and everybody who has been instrumental in organizing mission skills in the benefit of the students i think uh, birla college has been always uh, thinking of the overall personality development of the students to uh, provide various platforms and very various avenues for the growth of the students and i think the the this uh, attempt of arranging mission skill was possible only due to the consistent support and uh, hard work provided by uh, nest academy so once again thank you all and i am also thankful to the participants who have attended today and uh, i think they must have uh, got a lot of a uh, scope or a lot of knowledge after listening to both of you sir thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir thank you uh, uh, sir for your uh, concluding thoughts uh, thank you all the participants for joining us today uh, next saturday we'll be back with a webinar uh, discussing about the exciting world of travel and tourism so stay tuned on the bk birla facebook channel and we'll be back next saturday 5 pm thank you stay safe <laughs>